Hey everybody, welcome to the third and last part of my series about dynamic programming. In this video, we are going to discuss the traveling salesman problem, another famous example of a computer science problem that really benefits from the use of dynamic programming. In this problem, you have a traveling salesman that lives in city 1 and needs to make sales in a whole bunch of different cities, city 2, city 3, and so on up to city N. Each city is connected to the others by a road with specific driving time. After you visit all cities, you have to come back to your home city, city 1. And the question is, what is the fastest route that goes from city 1 to each of the other cities once and back to city 1? To answer this question, we are going to use a bottom-up approach, which builds the solution from the ground up, starting with the smallest sub-problem we can think of and builds from there. The smallest sub-problem is, if we start from city 1, what is the fastest tour, which is a route between cities, to a single other city? For example, if there are four cities overall. Once we know that, we can expand each single city tour to all of the two city tours. So if we are at city 2, we can now visit either city 3 or 4 that were not visited yet. And we can complete the rest of the tours in the same way. Now each tour has only one more city to visit. So let's add that. And now that we visited all cities, we need to go back to city 1. Now we computed all of the completed tours. So we can just pick the best one. Except that for more cities than that, this is a terrible idea. If we have 20 cities, we will have to check 20 single city tours, which will expand into 19 two city tours, since there are 19 cities left to visit, which will expand to 18 three cities tour, and you can see where this is leading. The complexity of this method is factorial, which is very, very slow. Can we improve upon that using dynamic programming? Is there some overlap between sub-problems? Well, let's take a look at the tree from before, but now imagine that there are actually more than four cities and we only see a part of the whole tree that involves city 1 up to 4. Now, let's focus on these two tiers. Both end in city 4, and both have the same subset of cities already visited, just in different order. This means there is no actual reason to expand both of them. We can just choose the better one and expand only it. Same goes for these two tiers and these two tiers. This way we save ourselves a whole bunch of work. Ok, let's see how to implement this idea in Python. We will start by implementing a class of a tour, which will have several properties we need to keep track of. The cities visited in the tour, they are sorted so we can compare different tours to see if they are composed of the same cities. The final city in the tour, where the salesman currently is. The city before the current one. This will be useful when tracing back our steps to see what was the best path, the cost of the tour, how long it takes, and how many cities it contains. Just to make later code more readable, we will define now some helper functions. First is the getCost function that takes two cities and returns their distance from one another. To understand how it works, you need to understand that the distances from one city to another are stored in a NumPy array, where rows are the cities you go from, columns are the cities you reach, so to get the distance from, for example, city 2 to city 3, we need the value at row 2 and column 3. Note that the distance from a city to itself is very high to prevent such tours. We also have a function to check if a tour exists within a list of tours, 
by comparing if the same cities were visited and if the current city is the same. Because remember, that's how we define a SOP problem. If the tour exists in the list, the function returns its index and false if it's not. The main function takes in only the NumPy distances matrix that we've seen. Then it calculates the number of cities, n, and the list of all cities. It also creates a memo list to store SOP problems for future use. Note that this implementation assumes the starting city is city 0, not city 1. Then we create the very first tour from the starting city, city 0, to itself. We store this tour in the memo list. Now we need to expand our tree. If we have n cities, we will have to expand it n minus 1 times. If you need an example of why this is true, take a look at the four cities tree from before. In each iteration, we want to expand the current longest tours, so we assemble them in a list. And for each of the current max length tours, we assemble a list of cities left to visit. From each of the cities left to visit, we create a new tour by adding it to the cities we've already visited and add the cost of the new resulting tour by adding the cost of traveling to that new city to how much we already traveled. We create this new tour and check if the tour we created already exists in the memo list, and if it does, what's its index? If the tour exists, we need to check if the new order of traveling the visited cities is better, and if it is better, update the memo list so later this will be the tours that's, ex that's expanded, not the previous one. If the tour is not in the memo list, we add it. After that, we have to expand each of the tours that visited all of the cities to account for returning to city 0, our starting city. Then we find the best possible tour by taking the maximum length tour with the lowest traveling distance. Note that we save the optimal tour in a different variable called optimal tour. All that is left to do is to retrace our steps to find the actual cities in the order that led to the best tour we just found. We can't just look at its cities since they are sorted and we don't know in which order they were added. We start from city 0 and trace our way from tours of length n to the first one of length 0. Each time finding the tours of the wanted length, finding among them the one that led to the optimal tour, and we add the current city in the tour to the route and update the optimal tour variable to now contain this tour, so in the next iteration of the loop we can find the tour that led to it. We just need to return the results and we are done. So, what is the complexity of this new dynamic programming approach? Well, since we have 2 to the power of n possible subsets of cities, as each city can be, be included or not, and there are n possible ending cities in the worst case. And for each such subproblem, we need to make comparisons that grows linearly with n, which adds up to the total complexity. And that's it for my dynamic programming trilogy. Thank you for listening. Subscribe if you want to get notified when new videos get released. See you soon!